Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I would do a quick video today about finishing. Um, it's something I get asked about quite often and I thought it was just something I would address very very briefly um, and I've got a few items that you may have seen me making in a few recent videos just to sort of demonstrate the point. Um, so to start off with, actually let me, let me have a little bit of a ramble first. So to start off with, um, there's two types of finishing I'm talking about. One is finishing the actual product that you're making whether that's with a knife or a scraper or a sandpaper or whatever um, and then there's um, sort of finishing with a product whether that's oil beeswax or what have you now what i've got here are a selection of items this is the little butter sp uh, spreader that i made not long ago and that's been given a fully sanded finish down to about 240 grit so it's nice and smooth ready for some more finishing i've then got a little spoon um, and again I've uh, sanded it everywhere apart from the back of the bowl which I've actually left a sort of a, a fine tooled finish on um, and I'm interested to see how that's going to come up with with the oil um, and then two little coffee scoops you've seen me make these before really like these actually so I thought I'd make a couple more as some gifts for some friends um, and what I've done again I've sanded all of the flat areas and I've left the bowl um, with a sort of a vaguely tooled finish now it's not a particularly good tooled finish it's not something I'm great at um, and I want to see how much this becomes improved um, when I put it into the oil um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the camera a bit closer in, obviously I've got a big tub of oil here which I'll explain about a bit more in a second, um, and we'll make a start. Right then guys, so I have here a pot of oil, this is almond oil which is what I tend to use, and I like to keep it in this because it gets it all in one place, it's nice and secure, and you can put your items in it as well as taking the oil out of it to use for other things. Um, now, of the five things I've got here, I did just find this little um, sort of simple cookser lying around that I completely forgot I had, um, so I'm going to use that as well. And really, for me, oil finishes come in two varieties. You've either got um, an oil bath like this, where you just take your item, plonk it in, leave it for a few hours or overnight, and then take it back out once all the oil has penetrated. Alternatively, um, you can take something like this, and you can apply layers of oil to it, um, and you'll do that several times um, and what I'm going to do these items I want to get finished anyway so I'm just going to drop them all in here in a second this one I'm going to apply some layers to just so you can kind of see because these are quite similar I want to be able to show you the difference between an oil bath finish and just a standard sort of coating of oil finish um, so this little butter spreader you know I'm really keen to see how this is going to turn out um, so I am going to just plonk that in there I can do this without smothering myself in oil, with oil. Um, same with this little spoon. And again, I want to show you what the difference between a smooth finish and a tooled finish looks like once you've finished the oil coating. So that can go in as well. Let's get you in there. Um, the cookser, likewise, it's completely smooth, so it should give you a nice comparison. Get in there. Um, and then finally, the little coffee scoop. You know, this is going to be a gift for a friend of mine. Um, and again, it's just going to sit in that oil. You know, you don't have to completely cover them um, as long as you've got everything, got a good little layer on it first. Um, and then this one, you've seen me do this before. You just take a nice clean cloth. And what I should say is where I've sanded, uh, what you need to make sure you do is clean all of that dust off first, which I have done. And then you can take a piece of cloth and you can just get a coating of oil on there. Now, one thing I will say while I'm doing this, with this oil bath, um, you will find it will get bits in it. Um, some people don't like that. I haven't really got a problem with it, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, you're always gonna get some bits in there. Um, but this oil, you know, I can keep reusing this time and time and time again um, without any ill effects. Um, you know, you're going to be buffing this off anyway, so any little bits that do transfer on are going to get buffed off. Um, and you know, this is a really quick process, you know, not everyone has access to kind of a, a container full of oil like this, or you don't want to keep one lying around for it for some reason or another, and that's fine, you know, you can do this. Now I've got some um, greaseproof paper down, just because I don't want to get oil soaked into my carving stump, because that can be a real pain to get out. 
um, and it can transfer onto your work. So, as you can see, this is the first coating. I'll give you a nice coat. You can see how quickly that darkens. Um, and I am going to leave this for probably half an hour. I'll come back and put another coat on. Uh, and I'll probably put five or six coats on that, wiping off the excess in between. Um, and the rest of these are going to live in this pot for probably a few hours. Um, I may even leave it overnight, though I probably won't. Um, but you know that's the joy of this. You know you can't really over oil something. Um, but what you do have to do, if, you, if you're using this method, they do take a lot longer to cure. Um, and curing is essentially once you've saturated it in oil and you've wiped off the excess, you need to leave it somewhere, probably on something like this, just to sit, let any kind of excess oil leach out, wipe off the excess, so on and so on and so on. Um, so I'm going to leave this for a little while, guys, and I will come back um, when we're pretty much done. Right then guys, so it has been about uh, four, maybe five hours now and I've taken everything out of the oil bath, uh, or stuff that was in there at least, and I've given everything a wipe down. Um, now I'll give you an example. Here is our little butter spreader. I'm really pleased with how this has come out. I really like the way the oil picks up not only the grain but the sporting as well. Um, and this is the kind of thing I really enjoy making. You know, it's simple, um, but it looks really, really nice when it's done. Um, and that's the thing about oil finishes is they really do bring out the effect of the wood. Um, I've been asked this question before, and obviously it has darkened the wood significantly. And if you're finishing it with any kind of sort of liquid product, you can't get away from that. Um, I use walnut, uh, not walnut oil, sorry, almond oil most of the time, though I do use walnut now and again. Um, but almond oil is one of the lightest oils I've found, um, and it tends to sort of, you know, although it does darken the wood, it doesn't darken it as much as most of the others. Um, now the thing to say about this, although this looks relatively dry at the moment, because I've only just taken it out and wiped off the excess, um, this will leach out a little bit more oil in the next few hours, maybe the next few days. Um, so I just need to keep an eye on that and just wipe off any that comes back out. Um, and what I really wanted to show you guys, um, in fact let me do this first. So this is just that little spoon we were talking about. You've got the really nice kind of flat flush finish. Um, and the other thing I was going to say is that there were a couple of little tool marks in there which now it's coated with oil you can't really see which I really like um, and again the rather untidy looking um, tooled finish on the back has actually sort of blended in really well now it's been oiled and hopefully that's picking up on the camera all right there um, but it does make that tooled finish look a lot better um, now moving on to our little coffee scoops now this is the one that I've been applying uh, layers to over the course of today. Had about five coats on there and you know it looks okay, it's pretty good um, and all in all I'm quite pleased with it. However the same um, spoon and it was made from the same billet um, looks reasonably different in terms of how dark some of these patches have picked up and that's just because it has been sitting in that oil bath and it has soaked in more oil. Um, now I really really like this one, I think the colours on this look amazing, um, certainly prefer it over this one. Um, and on that basis I'm pretty sure some of you might be asking well why don't you put everything in an oil bath? Um, and to be honest quite often I do, however there's a couple of good reasons why I don't. Um, so the technique I used for this, which was layering it with a coating of oil from a piece of cloth, leaving it for a bit, wiping off the excess, putting another layer on. Um, if you're using, or if you're making something like this, and you just want to finish it pretty quickly, that's one good reason just to give it a few layers, let it soak in, um, wipe it off, give it a buff. Um, the second one is what I'm going to be doing next episode, which is if you're using the oil as an initial finish and you're moving over to something else, whether that's a wax, whether that's a lacquer, uh, even a varnish, though personally I hate them and won't use them, but you know some people do like using varnish on these kind of things. Um, if you're using the oil as I do, which is just to provide a, an initial protective barrier, um, although it does look very good by itself and it does protect well by itself, um, you don't need to put it in an oil bath if you're putting, say, a beeswax finish on top. Um, now, 
that's my view on it. That's how I use oil for finishing. And as I say, next episode, I think what I will do is I'll take, I've done this before, I think a couple of times, but I will take you through how I make my oil and beeswax finish, um, how I put it together, what proportions I use, how I apply it and how I finish it. Um, so hopefully that will be of some use to some people. Um, and that's really it for today, guys. So I hope it was useful. As always, comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I hope you'll join me next time. Thanks, guys. Yeah.